Hello and welcome. My name is Brian Kaplan. I'm editor of the Banker magazine. I'm in Santander's London offices and I'm with Anna Patricia Botin, the chairperson. Uh, thank you very much for agreeing to the interview. Uh, let's get right down to business and let's talk about the most important thing this year in Santander's uh, strategy, which has been the purchase of, of Popular, which you got for one euro. So what was the rationale behind acquiring that bank? Well, it's great to be with you here in London, Brian. Um, and uh, let me just say we did not get it just for one euro. Uh, we, we got it for one euro in a resolution process. The bank was intervened by the uh, European authorities but we then had to uh, increase capital uh, in the bank by 7 billion euros. So it, it was a uh, very attractive transaction yeah. in which we expect to have a return of 13 to 14% over the but, next but nevertheless, I mean, some of the analysts have described it as the best di deal ever in the history of Santander. Well, uh, you know, deals are good once you have executed them. And I, I think it's a very, very attractive transaction in, in terms of the entry point, in terms of where Spain is and the economy is mm. in the cycle. But there's a lot of work to be done now to make that a really excellent transaction. Because one of the things it adds particularly, it, it increases your loans and deposits and makes you the leader in Spain, but also it adds on the SME, the small and medium-sized business yes. uh, uh, side. Is that one of the things that was attractive about it? Definitely. You know, uh, we've always said Popular uh, had a fantastic, probably the best bank in Spain for SMEs. And SMEs are very hard to grow. Uh, and gain market share uh, in, in developed economies. And uh, they were really the best. And so we're very excited about being now the market leader in Spain, not just in SMEs, but really SMEs was the main attractive, uh, you know, attraction point for us. Okay, but now it's a very different kind of deal from the deals that used to be done in acquisition at Santander uh, when your late father was in charge. I'm thinking of things like when you bought uh, Banespa in, in Brazil and it was an auction and the bank paid a billion dollars more than it, you know, over the top to get it because it had to get that deal. So what's changed between those days and, and now? Well, it, you know, the world has changed. We're in a very different environment. Uh, you know, I and my team, we don't believe in, in, in paying uh, too much. We think uh, we, we have a fantastic opportunity to grow organically. Uh, we can get into that later. Uh, and so, but if there are opportunities in our 10 core markets, we're going to look at them. And if we can get them at a good price, we will, you know, we will take the opportunity. We've done that in, in Portugal with Banif. It was a very similar situation. We were ready. We were the buyer of choice. You know, that is the beauty of our model is in 10 markets, we are very much the buyer of choice and right, okay. when things don't. But in one of those key markets, you didn't go for uh, HSBC's Brazil assets. Well, because we, we are being very disciplined and, and, and we are really being very strict in terms of our financial criteria. So it has to fit the strategic goals of the company, of the bank, but it also has to fit the, the financial criteria. And we do not need to overpay. So if somebody is willing to put a, a higher price, you know, that's fine. Okay, um, now let's talk about that 10 core markets philosophy. I mean, why is that so central to Santander's strategy? Well, retail banking uh, is about critical mass. It's many other things, but critical mass is a precondition. And we believe that being top three or having the potential to be top three is, is uh, very important. I mean, there is no hard number, but 10% market share, we think is, is sort of where we can really compete and have a very competitive uh, offer for our customers. Uh, and then it gives you the opportunity, of course, to grow. Now, being at 20, 25, like we are in many countries, um, some of the countries that yeah. we have a Well, I can ask you that because, I mean, some people are now saying that actually 10% is not really enough these days. You need to have more like 15%, which you've got in Spain, Mexico and Chile, for example. So is there any likelihood you're going to change the goal from 10 to 15? Well, you know, we've been very profitable, uh, high ROEs in Portugal and Argentina uh, with 10, 12, 14% uh, market share. It all depends how you work, and we work as a group. So we can give the advantages of, of, of higher than 10, actually, to our banks. We, we already work as a group. Uh, you know, our cost income is 46, 47 percent. Right. That's really one of the best, uh, if not the best, among our peer group right now. Uh, and that is very unique because we are a group. And so the hard number for others is not the same as, as for us. Right. Now, in the, in the current results, you're doing well in nine out of 10 markets, but may I ask you about the, the market that you have struggled in a bit, which is the US, mm -hmm. where the bank failed the stress test a few times. I know it passed it in 2017 at the holding company level, but also you've had problems in the consumer finance where you've had problems with both accounting and consumer protection. Mm -hmm. 
Has, is the US fixed now? So I, I said it would take us three years, and uh, you know it's been three years, and we believe we are well on the way to being uh, in the right place with the supervisors. For the first time since 2011 this year, Santander US has paid a dividend to the group. It's a small dividend, but it's a signal that the supervisor believes we are on the right track. So that is hugely important. Uh, we are showing much better numbers at Santander Bank NA. Uh, we are closing the gap with our peers uh, in terms of margins, in terms of growth. Uh, and Santander Consumer, we've just appointed Scott Powell, who's the country head for us in the US. He used to run consumer business for JP Morgan Chase. He is one of the best CEOs we could have to run the consumer business. Uh, it's already in a much better place, but okay. we, we believe he's going to do a great job for us. Okay, now let's finally turn to Brazil, which is a, a market that's doing really well. Uh, it's actually making about a quarter of your profits at the moment. I mean, is that almost too high to be that dependent on Brazil? Well, it's not just Brazil. I mean, I think the last three years we've made huge progress in Brazil. In Mexico, we've closed the gap in terms of ROE with the best in the country. Uh, you know, it, we're very excited about the progress of Brazil and what we now want is other countries to catch up with Brazil. So that is exactly the model. By the way, there's some years Brazil is going to do better, other times the UK is going to do better. And, yeah. and that is precisely the Santander model where, you know, since 20, uh, for, for 15 years, we've been delivering consistently profits, which is very rare for, for, the, for the banks. Okay, and just finally, we're in the UK, so what about the outlook for the UK, especially with Brexit in, in, in happening and it's not good for business? We've been cautious in terms of uh, uh, growth expectations for the UK since last year. We, we reduced our, our expectation for returns in the UK um, uh, to between 9-10%. Uh, we're actually doing better than that. We're around 11% return on tangible equity, so the economy has really uh, you know, held up pretty well. And I'd say our team has done an excellent job. They've done a fantastic job in, in, in what is becoming uh, a more difficult environment. So, uh, you know, we're ready. We have yeah. a very resilient balance sheet. So we're very, very uh, safe and, and, and we've been very prudent in our growth. And we have a lot of faith in the UK over the medium term. We're sure that things will improve soon. Um, and we're ready for that time so we can continue growing a bit faster. Adam, thank you very much. We'll come back and talk about technology in just a second. Thank you.